This is a presentation outlining the results of the rehabilitation after critical illness in adults clinical audit that was undertaken at Lincoln County Hospital. So to give a bit of background, back in 2009, NICE published a guideline called Rehabilitation After Critical Illness, which profiled the importance of rehabilitation for survivors of critical illness. Although it profiled the importance of rehabilitation, there was very sparse details around the type, frequency, intensity and duration of rehabilitation. And there has been very limited uptake of the recommendations since it was first published. Connolly et al. 2014 undertook a survey of intensive care units within England and Wales. With a 75% response rate, many highlighted the limited development of clinical services. The main barriers were lack of funding, insufficient resources and lack of priority given by the management team. In September 2017, NICE published new quality standards around this clinical guideline and this was designed to enhance the uptake of clinical services within this area and aim to improve the length of stay both in intensive care and the hospital, improve recovery both physical and non-physical, quality of life and mortality for patients who survive critical illness. There's been an increased number of so-called high-risk adults with a disjointed rehabilitation pathway from intensive care. And what we mean by high risk is their, is their risk of morbidity, which is identified through a short clinical assessment of both physical and non-physical risk factors, such as their length of stay on the intensive care unit, their pre-admission mobility level, any pre-existing respiratory or neurological conditions, but also the presence of delirium and sepsis. All these different factors will increase an adult's morbidity risk, particularly being on intensive care. And these patients who are identified as high risk need a structured rehabilitation pathway from intensive care through to the general ward and then through to discharge and follow up. And this audit looked at that pathway. So to give some demographics around this, up to 40% of patients who are ventilated for more than 48 hours will develop what is known as intensive care unit acquired weakness. And many will lose up to 1% of muscle mass per day, which has profound effects on their physical capabilities. Up to three quarters may develop some form of cognitive impairment as well. It's important to recognise that these problems, both physical and non-physical, may emerge more than three months after discharge from hospital, and return to activities can take up to nine to 12 months. This is important when considering discharge information and follow-up services. So when we look at the audit objective, the objective of the audit was to review the current physiotherapy practice at Lincoln County Hospital against each quality statement. Now within the quality standard there were four statements. However, for this audit we audited three out of the four. Statement one was around their stay on intensive care unit. Statement two was around the handover to the ward physio. And statement three was the discharge information and follow-up. Statement four was their official formal follow-up two to three months after hospital discharge. However, in this hospital, the nurses on intensive care will conduct this. And so we have left this out. So the audit statements themselves, we looked for 100% compliance for each one of the quality statements. So quality statement one, this was around whether the rehabilitation goals 
have been agreed within four days of admission to critical care or before discharge from critical care, whichever came sooner. Now the rationale behind this is that those who are high risk of morbidity need a comprehensive assessment to establish their rehabilitation needs. Their rehabilitation goals need to be set as early as possible and there's increasing body of evidence to say that starting rehabilitation early improves physical and non-physical functioning and recovery. Quality statement two was around whether adults who are risk of morbidity have a formal handover of care when they transfer from the critical care unit to a general ward. Now the rationale behind this is that continuity of, re of rehabilitation is vital and any delays or gaps in rehabilitation can slow down recovery. A structured handover is needed to ensure the ward team understands the patient needs and goals. And this should improve the overall experience of the patient's transfer to the general ward. Quality statement three is based upon the, the discharge information that patients are given that, that is based on their rehabilitation goals and needs when they are discharged from hospital. Discharge to a home environment for an adult who's been on intensive care can be difficult and can cause a lot of anxiety. Therefore, they need information about recovery, support services, and how to continue to work towards their goals. And as we've mentioned, it may, their issues may not come to light until about three months after they are discharged from hospital. So when we look at how we actually conducted the audit, it was over a one month period and it was a retrospective audit. So we're looking at patient's notes, observations of physios during the handover, and we used a data collection form. The eligibility was all adults who are admitted to the intensive care unit at Lincoln County Hospital. And within that one month period, there were 51 adults admitted. There was an initial screening question used to identify whether the patients who were admitted were identified as high risk or low risk. All low risk adults were excluded from the audit. So when looking at the results of the initial screening question, 44 adults were eligible for the audit. Out of those 44, 42, so 95% were assessed correctly on our CCRA, which is our Critical Care Rehabilitation Assessment Form. And this is our form that we use to identify whether patients are high risk or low risk of morbidity, taking into account the factors, the risk factors for mor morbidity. And out of those 44, 35 were identified as high risk. So the majority of our caseload are identified as high risk adults, so high risk of morbidity. So when we look at the results of each of the quality statements. When we look at quality statement one, it's partially achieved. So 91% of our high risk adults, their rehabilitation goals were set within four days of admission, which is really good. Also 91% had a CPACS completed, which is a critical care outcome measure. However, only 43% were actually involved in their goal setting, or if they couldn't be, um, it wasn't clearly documented the reasons why. For quality statement two, this was not achieved. So although 82% had a formal handover, of care from the ward from the ICU physio to the ward physio, with 37 having both a written and not and written and verbal handover. No patient had a handover that included all the required information that was needed. 73% had a handover that included summary of stay respiratory details and their treatment, both respiratory and rehab. 
However, only 14% had information around ongoing goals or any specific needs. And quality statement three was only partially achieved. Only 14% were given information on discharge based on their needs and rehabilitation goals. And only 29% were actually offered any physiotherapy follow-up. So overall, there is quite a disjointed, incomplete rehabilitation pathway for high-risk adults from intensive care unit to hospital discharge to follow up in, within physiotherapy. So our learning points. It's clear that we do start rehabilitation and goal setting early, which is really positive. However, our documentation is quite poor around whether we agree our goals with our patients, or if not, whether there's a clear reason why we don't. For example, whether they're sedated, ventilated, or have cognitive issues. Our quality of handover from the intensive care unit physio to the ward physio must improve. There needs to be a verbal handover and also a written handover. And it must include relevant details, particularly around their ongoing goals and their structured rehabilitation programme, because continuity of rehabilitation is so vital. Similarly, our information that we provide on discharge and our follow-up exercise physio class must improve because there is likely to be a high proportion of patients that are struggling at home and do not have the required input needed. We need to utilise our exercise after critical illness booklet which is a great resource for ongoing exercises. It gives some information around what they can expect on discharge and about recovery times, but also gives a patient a contact details, contact point, in case they need that for when they are discharged. However, this audit has highlighted that our current paperwork, both on the intensive care unit, on our ward transfer sheet, and also our hospital discharge sheet, is not clear. Some physios do not necessarily know which parts to fill in, and the current paperwork doesn't allow some of the sections in the handover information to actually be inputted, for example, ongoing goals and any specific needs. So I think our current paperwork is actually limiting some of our achievement of these standards. Here are the references. Thank you very much. If you have any further questions, then contact our physio department.